to the war. Watching my live streaming and by other means. We like to thank God is good. He's allowed us and afforded us to see one more day. And because of that, we give him thanks for being such a good God. For we realize that he didn't have to do it. There was nothing that we've done that he just had to bless us. But because of who he is, a God who loves, a God who cares, he has afforded us to see one more day. This morning we would like to begin our services by our scripture reading, by co-chair David Henry, followed by a prayer by Deacon Nance, Christian Nance, after which we will have a song by Deacon Johnson, after which we will come back with the word of God. Amen. Special and bottom. You are awesome. 
Father, you are El Elohim, Lord, the Most High God. Father, you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. Father, you are Jehovah Shalom, Lord of Peace, Father. Father, you are Jehovah Nisi, our banner, Lord. And so with that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for just being such an awesome and great God. Lord, we come before you. Just say that, Lord, you just look upon us today. Lord, we know now that some people are troubled with a troubled heart. Some people are going through domestic violence or alcoholism or whatever else have you, Lord, that spins us out of you. But Father, I know, Lord, that you are a God of the impossible. Lord, you are a God that made me to, to be able to, to compete with anybody, God, and make everybody whole. So Father, right now, I'm asking you just to make them whole, dear God. Because, Lord, we need you. And Father, we know that you're the God that we call upon, Lord, when we're in time of need, dear God. And so, Lord, we just say thank you, God. Thank you for being the God that, that loves us, that cares about us, Lord. Father, you've been so good to us that we've been to ourselves, Lord. Father, I don't have enough time to say how much we appreciate you, Lord. Father, we don't deserve your sufficient grace and mercy, but you give it to us anyway, God. But Lord, thank you for just being in the share of your son with us, Lord. Lord, your only begotten son, the one you sent to us to be able to save this dying world, Lord. And Lord, we want to say thank you, Father. Father, we know that your son died on the cross, Father, and shed his blood, Lord, it is our sinners, God. But Father, we know he didn't just steal that cross, God. We know the third
where can I go but to the Lord? In times like these, where can we go but to the Lord? I'd like to thank Deacon Henry for our scripture reading and Deacon Nance for our prayer. Deacon Johnson for that wonderful selection. This morning we would like to invite your attention to the New Testament right to the book of Philippians. Very familiar passage of scriptures. Philippians, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse number one. Philippians, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse number one. Philippians 4, beginning at verse number 1. We pray that you are there. And the word of God is recorded according to the writer of Philippians 4. Beginning at verse number 1, and it reads as follows. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. My beloved, my dearly beloved, I beseech Eurotas and beseech Sintashi that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow bearers, whose name are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Maybe think on these things. We like to teach briefly on the subject this morning. What are you thinking on? What are you thinking on? Very familiar, peculiar topic, I guess you would say, title. But what are you thinking on? In a time where there seems to be so many uncertainties, a time where some people seemingly don't know what to think, when the leaders of the country mind seems to be divided on as to what and how to handle this COVID situation, some are saying that the country should be opened back up, and others are saying that it wouldn't be a good idea because of not having a known cure or vaccine for this virus. Uh, some are questioning Trump's way of thinking, wondering if he cares more about the winning back of the presidency than he does about the lives of the people. Others are thinking that this epidemic, this pandemic, is a warning from God. It is because of all the things that are taking place in our society today that no one knows exactly what a person is thinking. Yeah. In spite of those that are in the world and what they're thinking, those who have been born again 
have learned to keep our minds stayed on Jesus. Yeah. But even Christians, some of us have been made to suffer some things as well. Because of this pandemic, some have lost jobs, others have lost homes, some have lost friends and loved ones because of this type of virus or other instances that relates to this virus. Even though our faith has been shaken because of our trust in God has not been broken in spite of. And it's because of his promises that God made to those who love him. When we study this, this epistle or this letter that uh, the church at Philippi was received, you'll discover that Paul writes this epistle uh, and he uses a couple of themes within it. One of the themes he uses is called joy. Uh, joy is mentioned in one way or another 19 times in these four brief chapters. Another emphasis is, he speaks about the mind, the mind, the part that houses the thoughts of man. One theologian uh, summarized the theme of the book of Philippians as the Christ-like mind that brings Christian joy. Uh, this morning we would like to deal with the things that Paul teaches concerning the mind. He talks about the remembering and the thinking. Uh, in this epistle you'll find in the, the first chapter that he talks about the single mind, uh, the fellowship, the furtherance, and the faith of the gospel. In chapter 2, he speaks of the submissive mind. He uses the example of Christ, Paul, Timothy, and Epipodotus. In the third chapter, he deals with the spiritual mind. The Christian's past, which deals with salvation. The present, which deals with sanctification. And the future, who deals with the glorification of God. Lastly, he talks about the secure mind, uh, which deals with the presence of God, the peace, the power, and provisions in what God allows his children. Now, Paul wrote this epistle to the first church in, in Europe that he founded and planted while he was on his second missionary journey. Uh, the place was called Philippi, which was located in the vicinity around Macedonia. It was named after a king by the name of Philip. The king had been wanted from the Thracians, and it was said that the city had great value. Uh, it was noted for its gold and the fertile soil that it possessed. Yeah. And it was governed by Roman laws and it was subject to Roman rules as well. It was like a little Rome in the midst of a Greek culture. Uh, and after leaving Philippi, Paul joined on to Thessalonica in care of those who believed that were there. And five years later, Paul visited Philippi again back on the way to Corinth. And then on his way back, he visited them again. There was a deep love between Paul and the church at Philippi because there was no trouble in that church. But oh, how things had changed. At the time of the writing of this epistle, Paul had now been arrested and he was now put under house arrest. And if you read in the first chapter, around the verse number 12, Paul writes, but I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out, brethren, unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in other places. And many of the brothers in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much bolder to speak without fear. Paul writes this epistle while in bondage in Rome. And the church at Philippi, they heard about Paul's arrest. And they wanted to send him some aid. So they sent Epaphroditus, of which they had taken an offering, to send to Paul. But it is said that it was like one month's journey to get to where Paul was. But after being gone for a few months, 
the church said that he was gone too long. And while Epaphroditus was gone, he fell sick. And, and, and we don't know exactly how long he stayed sick or how long he was gone. But after a period of time, he recovered. And he was well enough to return to Philippi. Now Paul knew that the church at Philippi was a good church. But he also knew that the environment in which they lived, uh, there was a, they were in a good place in the word of God because Paul had taught them. But there were also uh, some things that were going on around them that Paul knew being raised up in the, in the Roman culture uh, as well that would go on anyway in spite of what they had been taught. Not knowing how long he would be in bondage, not being able to, 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 to go to them, to, to encourage them in the word of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Paul, Paul set out and wrote this letter to them to encourage them uh, in the word of God that they might not go back and fall back into the sin that they once lived in by doing the worldly things that was around them. But I find it ironic that the word sin is not mentioned anywhere in the book of Philippians. Y'all study it when you get home. The only suggestion of sorrow is found in the third chapter, around verse 18, where Paul weep over the professed Christians who had became worldly again, and, and, and they dishonored Christ. So Paul knew that how those who had believed on his preaching and teaching the word of God, who confided in him to be a minister to them and to bring them the word of God. But Paul also knew that if he could get them to keep their minds on the things of God, that they would also receive the promises and the blessings of God. Now, I don't believe that Paul was worried, but some who may have been newly converted may have worried about Paul's concern for them, not being able to see him come back to teach them again. So, in, the, in, the, in, in verse 5, uh, he deals with a few things. Uh, verse 5, he deals with God's presence. In the latter part of the verse, he says that the Lord is at hand. And this does not mean he's coming soon, but he's near to help us right now. Yeah. God wants us to know that no matter what we're going through, uh, what kind of situation we've been faced with, if we can look beyond our situations and think on the things of God, he will bring us through. Yeah. Uh, when you stay in the presence of God, you don't have the desire to worry about what someone else is doing and, and you'll be able to be led by the Spirit of God. The next time someone comes to you talking about what you need to do to make things better, just help them out. Tell them if you spend the time that you pretend you are trying to do to make things better, use that time to spend in the presence of God and then you'll realize that you won't have time for anything else but to do what God commands us to do. And if you do your part, God has already proven that he'll do his part. Yeah. If you look at verses 6 and 7, uh, he deals with God's peace. Now how many of you know that God's peace is a result of faith? And Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of God will come when the believers practice right thinking, right praying, and right living. When we do these things, you'll find peace and not worrying. Worrying is, the, is what causes tension between the mind and the heart. The peace of God will guard your hearts and mind, according to the word, if we would meet the condition that God gives us that he leaves in the scripture. All God requires of us is to do the right thing. God doesn't need us to try to figure out how the church should be. This is why he left the instructions in the whole world. There's no reason why churches, uh, why these churches, the reason why these churches have problems, many churches, is because they stray away from the instructions, which is the word of God, 
and they began to implement their way. They want things to be done uh, in the church. It makes you wonder sometimes, are they, are they really saved? Uh, God didn't make his judges over who be, who saved or not. Don't get me wrong. But I believe the reason that God tells us not to judge folks uh, is because all you got to do is watch them. And then they'll show you who they are and whose they are. I, I often say that you will see uh, an apple tree bearing watermelons. You know, it is what it is. If just watch them long enough. You ain't got to question nobody. You ain't got to judge no one. Just watch them long enough and they'll show you who they are. But, but notice who it is that always brings little stuff seemingly uh, and starts little messes in, in, in the house of God sometimes that will happen now in Philippi. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but maybe just me. But it seems to me that it's always the same old few that, that, that causes tension uh, within the body of Christ. And the same ones seem to be the old, only ones always involved. They would never have God's peace. And it's simply because they're thinking wrong. Paul talks about the mind here. And if, if you want to do, if you want to do right, it's not hard. All you have to do is think right. Thoughts are powerful. Uh, Proverbs 23 and 7 tells us uh, that as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think on the right thing, if you say you'll do the right things, it is at this point you have and receive the peace of God in your lives. Mm -hmm. Now, when you study in verses uh, 10 through 13 of our text, the writer shows us God's power. God's power. Paul never, uh, he was never a victim of circumstance. He had learned by experience the secret of God's peace. Uh, this is why he says in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In, all, in other words, he was saying, I'm ready for anything through the strength of the one who lives in me. I can do all things through Christ. And we need to understand that God cannot work through us until first he works in us. Right? Sometimes he works in us in different ways. The word teaches us how he works in us through the word according to 1 Thessalonians uh, 2 and 13. Uh, he also works in us through prayer by the Spirit according to Ephesians 2 and 14. And sometimes even works in us through suffering uh, according to 1 Peter 5 and 10. But last but not least, Paul tells us of God's provisions in verses 14 through 23. The 19th verse says, But my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And this is why the saints of God should be praise in spite of their situations. And I stop by to ask you a question. What are you thinking in times like these? What, what is your mind stayed on? Uh, what state of mind has this pandemic caused you to be in. Some are running around thinking about dying because their minds are stayed on this corona. But I would like to recommend something to you. Uh, if you would take your mind off dying and start thinking about living again forever, you probably won't spend so much time on this COVID-19 thing. Because all you're going to do, trust me, we all got to leave here. Yeah. yeah, no matter how you, you do it, or uh, what be the cause of it, we all got to leave here. For the writer of the Hebrew says in, in the ninth chapter, the 27th verse, he said that it's important for man once to die. But after this, the judgment. And, and I'm not saying that this, this pandemic is, is nothing to be concerned with, because it's a serious situation, and people are dying from the situation. Yeah. All I'm saying is, if you've been born again, if this virus happened, to be the way God calls you home. We're not living to die. Right? But we're dying to live. That's the difference. And if we die in Christ, uh, we shall live again with the Lord forever. Now, now we need to keep our minds on the things of God. I heard Paul say uh, here in, in Philippians, in the 8th verse, 
the same chapter. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. I heard the word of God say in Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And I don't know about you, but when the burdens of this whole world make their presence known in my life, when trouble seems to be on every hand, I stop and look back and take inventory on my life. And I think about what is already done for me. And when my mind runs back, it reminds me of all the things that he already brought me through. Sometimes when I think about it, how he's kept his arms all around me, I can't help but give God praise. I don't know what's on your mind, but I'm just thinking about how good he's already been to us, how he's already blessed us. And I'm just thinking about how he woke us up early this morning. We were clothed and still in our right mind. The sheep that we slept on last night wasn't our winding sheets. I begged them to come our cooling boards. I'm just thinking about uh, how we had food to go on our tables. Yeah. I'm just thinking about when the devil thought he had me, how God reached down and he grabbed me. I'm just thinking about when the devil put a hit out on me and tried to destroy me and tried to take my life. But the Lord stepped in and made no death behave, and God developed me from trying to be destroyed in me. And I'm just thinking about how much he loved me. Do you ever think about that sometimes when people have broke you off, they say you never be anything or you never amount to nothing. But just look at you now. Don't you ever think about it. You could have been dead, should have been dead, or would have been dead. But God had mercy on us, and he wouldn't let it.
So we thank God for the teaching this morning. We thank God for the Holy Word. And I don't know about you, but when I think about who I used to be, not bragging, but every now and then I sing those songs and just look at me now, you just look at me now, can't you just see how the Lord has blessed me, you Amen, and may God bless you.